This is an overview of the post tabs widget for Elementor by Unlimited Elements. Let's get started. To get started, drag the post tabs widget into your Elementor column. What this widget does, it shows all of your posts in a tab format so you can navigate between the different posts using the tabs on the top. Over here inside of post query, you can decide to show which kind of post types you want to show inside of the post tab. For example, not many know, but even WooCommerce uses post for its products. So I'm just going to move this to products and you can see now it's showing WooCommerce products. So any kind of post type you have, you'll have, you have an option to switch between them over here in the post types. I'm going to bring that back to posts and down here we can decide how many we want to show right now. It's showing maximum of 10. I'm going to push this down to four just so there won't be so many. And you can decide how you want to order this and the order direction. So I'm going to order this by title, for example, and instead of descending, I'll change it to ascending. Perfect. Looking good. Awesome. Let's jump into general settings back and see what we have over here. So before we continue, actually, I'm going to make my section content width a little bit less wide so it will look better. And over here, let's jump back into the general settings by clicking on the widget itself and we can decide about the alignment. So right now I'll just align it to the left and you can see it's aligned the image, the text and the button to the left side. Direction is for RTL languages. You don't need to touch this if you're not in an RTL language. Over here, the button text, we can change this to any text we like. For example, learn more. And we can turn on or off any parts of the widget itself. So right now I turned off the image and the title and you can see it's showing just the date, the text and the button. I'm gonna turn those back right on and let's jump into the style tab. Over here in the style tab, the first section is for the tab bar. The tab bar is the upper part over here. So you can change that its color to any color you want. Right now it was a transparent color. So I just push that to black. Now we're not really seeing it because the items cover it right now. So I'm just going to add some padding so you can see it around the items. And over here we can change the radius if you want to make that rounded. And later on you can make the items rounded as well. Maybe actually let's leave that as rounded and we can see we'll play around with this. So tab bar alignment. This is for the items inside of the tab bar. Right now it's not too wide, so it's hard to see. Let's jump back into content post query and change the maximum items to two, just so I can have more flexibility over here and play around with that. So right now, if I'll change this to flex start, you can see the items have jumped to the start. If I'll change it to flex end, the items will jump to the end. Let's leave them in the center part and we can add a border to this whole black part. I'm not going to touch this right now. Inside of tab item, you can see we can change the tab radius. So I'm going to make my tabs radius rounded and we can play around with the padding. So if I want them to be a bit wider, I'm just going to unlink this and add 20 pixel padding from the bottom and top and 50 from the sides. And now you can see that uh, they're wider and a bit taller over here in tab item margin. This is if you want to separate them from not touching each other. So just going to add some margin over here as well, just so they're not so close together. And you can see you can get all sorts of effects and play around with this depending on your design. So for the tabs, there are all sorts of states. Right now we're in the regular state, which is not the selected one. So let's just change the selected one, which is actually the item active to a different color so we can understand what's going on. And I'll change this, for example, to a bluish color. And now you can see that the active one has a different color. So you can now toggle between them and you can understand which one is active and which is not. Also for the hover state, which is when we hover over with our mouse cursor, you can decide about the different design. So really, it's really flex flexible. You can change the background, the text color, the typography 
and the border of each one of these items over here. Let's minimize this and jump into content. Over here in content, uh, the first thing that I want to talk about is that you can actually separate the tab bar from the content. So you have a slide over here. So if you want to make some space between those two, you can. And you can change the background color of the content part. I'm going to leave that white right now. And of course, you can play around with the padding if you want to add padding. Let's make this a subtle gray just so we can see it. Of course, you have also content radius if you want to make this rounded as well. Let's take off the radius from everything just so it doesn't look too weird. I mean, I don't know what your design is going to be, but let's get this off. Let's take off the padding over here. And maybe let's jump into tab item. Take off the margin. And let's take off the radius from here as well. Okay, so now it's looking less weird <laughs> cool so in content over here um, I think we went over everything so we have padding background content and tab spacing and the radius let's jump into post image over here in the post image again we have an option for radius if we want to make our image rounded and decide how high we want our image of course this is a responsive field so you can change this between different screen resolutions. If you want a border for your image, you can add that. Of course, we have border width and border color, which are the default Elementor settings. The next parts are for title, date, text, and button by orders. So we have image, title, date, text, and the call to action button. Over here in the call to action button, you have all the different settings that you might need. You can change its spacing, for example, you can change its radius if you want and all the other different color settings. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful and I'll see you in the next video.